I've been editing all of our videos for Tech Summit since the start. I've also wanted to put some PC builds on our channel. Well, this is where these two things get settled. Introducing our first PC build of our YouTube career, the Ryzen 7 budget PC for Nicholas. Let's begin. We went for a Ryzen 7 CPU because this PC is being built for work such as video editing, photo editing, 3D rendering, and multi-threaded workloads like that. The 8 cores of this CPU and its low price is what made the Ryzen 7 one of the best options for us. First off, we are using a Corsair Spec Alpha mid-tower case for this build. It comes with all of its I.O. in the front. The motherboard of choice is the Asus B350 Plus motherboard to house Ryzen CPU and a DDR4 RAM. Next, of course, is a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, our 16 gigs of DDR4 HyperX Fury memory, and a 120mm Corsair H60 water cooling system for a CPU. Our GPU of choice is the MSI GTX 750 Ti. Now, hear me out here. We're using this GPU because we were trying to keep the price as low as possible, and since I already had a spare 750 Ti, I felt like it would be helpful to save Nicholas the $150 that would cost to just buy it. Of course, if we were to buy a GPU for that price, we just would have gone for a GTX 1050 or something like that. This is a temporary solution, and it will be upgraded later on. And in case you were curious, don't worry, we will still have performance records later on. For storage, we're using a 1TB hard drive for bulk files and 120 gigs of SSD storage for Windows. Now that we've got all of the parts sorted through, it's time to start the build. The first thing we do is install the CPU. You relift the retention arm and line the CPU properly with the socket, so we make sure that the triangles are aligned on both the CPU and the socket. Once it's in place, we lower the retention arm. Now we install the RAM. We start by pulling back the small clip that will secure the RAM stick. We are going to use the two grey slots instead of the black ones for now. Now we align the RAM stick with the entry and press down. Okay, so this won't fit for some reason. No. Please don't tell me. Is this DDR3 RAM? Okay, so we ordered DDR3 RAM by mistake and just ordered the replacements for DDR4. We will continue the build for now and just add the RAM when it gets here. Sorry about that. The I.O. shield is pretty easy to install. Just align the shield properly with the motherboard so the ports can fit through it when we install the motherboard shortly. Apply some pressure and when it pops in, you'll know you've installed the I.O. shield. Now we place the motherboard in the case and align the holes in the motherboard with the standoffs in the case. Then screw the motherboard down through those entries. Once that's finished, we've installed the motherboard. Now we place the power supply inside the case and we stick it through the cutout. We screw it in and done. Now comes the water cooling system. First we install the fan and the radiator simultaneously by holding them up together and screwing in the longer included screws. We made sure to add some thermal paste to the CPU before this next step. To place it on the CPU, we took the magnetic plate and the included bolts. We screwed everything in onto the side of the plastic grips beside the CPU. And now the water cooling system is installed. Installing the GPU was very easy. We removed the two metal brackets on the back that aligned with the PCIe slot, and we pulled back the security clip and placed the GPU in, waiting to hear it click. We screw the GPU down and we are done with that. Installing both storage solutions was pretty easy. Just slide the hard drive through the sentry and clip the SSD onto the dedicated enclosure. After connecting this mess of cables to their respective ports and do a bit of cable management, well, more like a lot of cable management, we finally get our hands on the DDR4 RAM and installed it. The footage you're looking at now is from after we did all of that, put the side panel on. So now we're ready to power on the PC. So, after finally installing Windows 10, the first thing we do is get our hands on the Adobe Suite. So we ran a few tests starting with Photoshop. The software was incredibly smooth and thanks to the 8 cores on the CPU, this computer will be able to handle much of your Photoshop work later. We will keep you guys updated on its performance. After Effects was handled without any problems. Layers, effects, and particle world layers were easily taken care of. It was a very smooth experience overall, and there isn't really anything to complain about. Adobe Premiere had us very surprised. Playback at full resolution was buttery smooth and it handles many layers and effects. It managed to render the footage very quickly and overall, it looks like Nicholas is going to have a great time editing on this new machine. Now, this GTX 750 Ti is just a temporary add-on and we will be replacing it with something much better later on. Also, the build is missing some lighting so we will be adding RGB fans in the future, but for now, it gets the job done just fine. 
So we've reached the end. We did run into many bumps along the way, such as us accidentally ordering DDR3 RAM instead of DDR4, and trying to install Windows 7 Pro where there aren't any Ryzen drivers for the OS, and some placement issues. But this build is complete. Performance in Adobe software seems great, and now we've got two editors for Tech Summit. For more content, make sure to subscribe to our channel as we upload tech videos like this one weekly, and make sure to hit that bell to stay updated when a new video comes out. For links to all of the parts featured in this video, expect to find those in the description. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy!